So what linguistic genomics does is it looks at base pairings of words. What are the theoretical possibilities around a word? And so in the case of brick, brick can mean an object, it can mean an action in basketball, it can mean a color, it can mean a number of other of those things. It could be a, a chunk of ice, it could be a bunch of, of different processes, it could be a paving stone. All of those are theoretical possibilities and it is not until I link it to a series of other theoretically ranged components that I actually can get communication. So what linguistic genomics does in its simplest sense is it looks at all of the base pairings of communication and then treats each one of those as a metaphor rather than a literal fra fr fragment of communication. So that when you look at cross-communication linkages, so I'm looking at one language to another, I'm looking at one culture to another, I'm looking at one time period to another, I'm not trying to figure out what one word meant and then hopefully be able to reconstruct what that word meant. Rather, I'm going forward and then identifying the context of the expression pattern, encoding that, and then unicoding that across time, across culture, across language. So a great example of linguistic genomics would be the term Sakura in Japanese. That term literally is, is built and is framed around a cherry blossom. But throughout history, in Japanese culture and Japanese literature, the Sakura becomes a metaphor for death, becomes a metaphor for the samurai, becomes a metaphor for beauty. There are all kinds of different things that the Sakura, the word the Sakura could mean. And rather than trying to say it must be the flower and then the flower has metaphoric meaning, we allow it to just stay in the metaphor space so that at the appropriate time, when I'm trying to get the concept of what's represented by the samurai use of Sakura, I'm actually understanding that that has to do with honor and dignity in Bushido. It doesn't have anything to do with a flower. And I don't have to carry it through a flower translation to get to the underlying meaning. We then, in linguistic genomics, build a series of metaphoric relationships where we can capture those metaphors and we can hold those metaphors in simultaneity so that if we need to get an expression and we need to understand an expression we can take the context of expression patterns interleave those expression patterns and come away with an understanding of intent and metaphoric sense rather than a literal sense of translation